This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Do you know who Charles Spurgeon agrees with? Answer, everybody. This is Wretched Radio. It has been rightly stated by Ian Murray that Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers from the 19th century, dying in, I believe, 1892, maybe 1893, was so prolific. Hmm. Charles Spurgeon was so prolific. Oh, I'm sorry. How prolific was he? <laughs> we just started, <laughs> and you've drifted away. That's what happens. You when don't we like don't Charles rehearse. Spurgeon. Is that the deal? <laughs> no, I love Charles. So Spurgeon. you are you're a Spurgeon hater. <laughs> I got it. Let that be blogged someplace. Ha! Ah, that's enough evidence to yeah. condemn somebody. That's all we need. Charles Spurgeon was so prolific, Ian Murray rightly stated that basically you can cherry pick quotes from his works to support virtually any position, even those it's clear he adamantly opposed. What does this have to do with the price of tea in Texas on a Tuesday? Answer, it has more to do with the price of plagiarism on a Sunday morning from Alabama. Why? Because the president of the Southern Baptist Convention has been revealed to be someone who lifts sermons whole cloth, presents them as his own to the tune of at least 140 times, preaching with his wife and also plagiarizing somebody's work. An associate pastor clearly plagiarizing somebody's work. And there are those who are defending them, claiming Charles Spurgeon is okay with plagiarism. Let us apply the analogy of Spurgeon. Normally, we talk about the analogy of Scripture, that the Bible interprets the Bible. For instance, eternal security. You've got some verses that seem to suggest, huh, Hebrews 6, can I lose my faith? And then in my opinion, you have got a boulder sitting on the other side of the scale, outweighing the pebbles of the verses that seem to imply you can lose it. Remember, God doesn't save with a pencil and an eraser on the end, said R.C. Sproul. He saves eternally. It's not conditional salvation. It's eternal life that we are offered, which means it can't be lost. So how do you weigh the two? You weigh the two verses. Which ones seem to indicate you can lose it versus what do we got for the ones that are crystal clear? And you have got verses that are so clear. Romans 8 is filled with clarity that you cannot be separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I take those clear verses, and now I interpret the other ones in light of the clear, bolder ones. And I think we need to do that with Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon did talk about plagiarism, and he did so in bolder fashion. He was crystal clear on the subject. No, you cannot plagiarize, and those who do are dumb dogs. I think he was taking from Isaiah, one of the prophets. It's in the Old Testament, if you haven't unhitched it yet. They called him dumb dogs. Plagiarizers are dumb dogs. Now, that seems like it's pretty crystal clear, and there are more times when Charles Spurgeon in either the classroom, in writing, or from the pulpit said, "Um, plagiarism, big, bad, no, no. You need to know, this, by the way, is from Spurgeon.org, that Charles Spurgeon was kind of unique in Great Britain because the orators, the preachers of his day from the Church of England, they just used homilies from a book of homilies. Charles Spurgeon believed, no, the preacher should not be reading somebody else's work, but doing his own work. And don't let this frighten you. There was a reason for it. The third person of the Trinity. Don't panic. Don't don't panic. The third person of the Trinity is still talked about in the Bible, is still active. And yet so many of us who have seen the abuses of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit sometimes get a little little gun shy. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean the preacher should wait upon the Lord and ask God to illuminate his mind, to come up with a correct outline, structure, and theme for a particular Bible verse, that the Holy Spirit would work on his heart? Charles Spurgeon 
in some ways, believe me, it, 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 you would hear him today in our current context and go, um, is he like charismatic or something? No, he wasn't. He just did not agree with the gifts that charismatics do today. And yet, he talked freely about the Holy Spirit. And this is one of those instances. The preacher should depend not on pre-written sermons, but the Holy Spirit. This dependence took place not only while preaching, but even in sermon preparation. At the heart of Spurgeon's rejection of plagiarism was his deep conviction that preaching should be led by the Spirit. I think that's true in our lives a lot, isn't it? Does God operate in a way that he helps us in situations? Yes, he does. Does he help us to think? Yes. It doesn't mean we get to unplug our brains and just let God take over. That's not biblical. We work hard to interpret the Bible. We work hard to garner and gather wisdom to dispense it to others. And yet, simultaneously, being pneumatic, that the Holy Spirit is more than welcome to help us out in a divine kind of way. We shouldn't be afraid of that without getting carried away. Charles Spurgeon would spend much of the night studying scriptures, trying out different sermon outlines, praying for the Spirit to guide him in preparing the sermon. During his study, he would consult commentaries and other writers, but never as a substitute for the Spirit's leading. He looked for spiritual guidance. Quote, Many ministers appear to think that they are to choose the text. They are to discover its teaching. They are to find a discourse. We do not think so. They study, but the Holy Spirit helps us to know what is right. Is that an infallible system where the Holy Spirit absolutely every time will give every Christian the right understanding? Nope. But that's why we pray for it fervently, so that he will. Charles Spurgeon said that a plagiarist forgoes the work of the Spirit. This is humongous. Charles Spurgeon, as we will hear, began preaching at the age of 17. At the age of 19, he was preaching big time, two years in. When he was 17, he actually would use more heavily outlines from former great preachers like Gill or Watson when he was 17 starting out. By the time he turned 19, he was doing his own sermon prep work and railing against plagiarism. We need to note that because some people would say, well, well, look what Spurgeon, he was using it at 17. You're right, when he was a novice. We, we also know that Charles Spurgeon would say that if somebody is just a deacon and the pastor is not available that Sunday to read somebody else's sermon, that's just fine, but they should give credit. People who want to use Spurgeon to back them up when they try to nuance the terrible nature of plagiarism are, are pulling it out of context. But Charles Spurgeon clearly reveals, no, you don't plagiarize. You study super hard. And that is why, after two years, he was able to so manage the Bible that he could do his own sermon outlines, and they're amazing at the age of 19. Why? Because he was studying the Bible. And he was not being robbed of the Spirit's growth in his life. When a man, Spurgeon was preaching four times a week. He had his nose in the book. He'd be up till Saturday night, late into the night, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready to preach on Sunday. And that much study and commitment to the word, it's going to grow a pastor. It is going to sanctify a preacher. There are plenty of people, said Spurgeon, who hardly know anything about the gospel. They preach, so he's talking about pastors. They preach about great many things, but little or nothing about Jesus Christ. They buy their sermons cheaply and preach them at their ease. They ask God to teach them what to say and then pull their manuscripts out of their pockets. I think I read a tweet from Don Green over the weekend that said, um, if, if we're not going to crack down on plagiarism and it's okay to just take somebody else's work and read it, you shouldn't be getting theology degrees. You should be getting a performance art degree. That's all this is from Spurgeon. 
We have had to mourn, especially in years gone by, that we could look from parish to parish and find only dumb dogs in the pulpits. And some men who might have spoken with a little earnestness, if they had liked, let the people slumber under them instead of preaching the word with true fidelity, remembering that they will have to give an account to God at the last day. I think it was Don Green again who said, I can promise you there will not be a preacher who dies, who stands before the Lord to give an account of how he handled the word of God and is going to say, Lord, I just wish that I'd plagiarized more and studied less. It has a sanctifying effect on the preacher and on the hearers. When the pastor is on fire, people come to watch him burn. And those sparks set them on fire too. Plagiarism, it is a fire hose that douses the Spirit's work in the preacher and in the hearer, and Spurgeon would have none of it, despite what some people are claiming. This is Wretched Radio. Well, thank you, Carol. I, I can't wait to try some of that low-sodium peppermint lasagna. Sounds delicious. Let's get to the weather, shall we? As you can see, we are going to have a massive warm front moving its way up the eastern seaboard, expecting temperatures upper 90s and low 100s. Unless, of course, you're outside of Christ, then on Judgment Day, it is going to be hot. Back to you, Carol. Not only hot, weeping, gnashing of teeth. And so thirsty, your tongue's going to be stuck to the roof of your mouth. You're just going to wish for a storm to come through, which you folks down in the south can be expecting on Wednesday.